Rachel and we're here at Irwin Prairie State Nature Preserve out here west of Toledo, Ohio. And today we're here on March 20th and you wanna know what that means. It's the beginning of spring, yay! And also March Madness, hooray! But we're not here to talk about basketball today, we're here to talk about frogs. Out here at Irwin Prairie, they have a wonderful wet prairie preserve that is a perfect location for frogs to be living. And today I'm going to talk about the western chorus frog because it's one of the first to be calling as soon as the first thaw begins. So they start calling even before it's officially spring. This has given them the nickname peepers, but don't let this confuse you because there's also a different species called spring peepers. Now chorus frogs call can be described as a crescendo of increasing notes. It sort of sounds as if you're running your thumb along your comb. It's kind of a very plucky noise. And what they do is they're usually calling during the day and the beginning, right after it thaws. And then further into the season, they only call when it's overcast or mostly in the evening. So by April or May, they've stopped calling because the breeding is over. This small frog is usually no more than an inch long. When spotted, it can be anywhere from a gray to brown shade and has three long stripes down the back. This also can be caught up and look more like spots as well, so it's a little bit tricky. But the key thing is that they have a bright upper lip color, brighter than the rest of their body. And also a distinct feature is dark stripes along its face, starting at the nostril, goes through the eye, and then down the side. This is what I refer to as the frog with the eyeliner. Underneath, you'll see a white to yellow belly, and it has darker spotting or stippling on it. The western chorus frog habitat is from southern Quebec, Canada, all the way over to Iowa, down to Oklahoma, and then sweeps through Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and then up to Pennsylvania. Although there are also the upland chorus frog and the boreal chorus frog, these are subspecies that can be found along the east coast down to the Gulf, and then over up onto the west side of the continent over to Arizona. Chances are if you hear this call, you can just say that it's a chorus frog and not worry so much about what subspecies it is. Frogs are good at living in areas that have water but don't have a lot of fish. These are small frogs that really like damp meadows or wet prairies, marshes, swamps, or temporary pools also known as vernal pools. Habitats that human have, humans have created for them are low flowing ditches this can be seen or heard in places such as along the Wabash Cannonball bike trail here near Toledo. They eat things like ants, spiders, beetles, and snails. And then the tadpoles will eat algae and other microscopic organisms in the water with their tiny little forming mouth. Frog mating is called amplexus. This is the position where the smaller male grabs onto the female so he's attached to her back, kind of like a backwards hug. These frogs will lay up to a thousand eggs at once in a mass in the water, and then at the same time, the male will fertilize them. The eggs will hatch anywhere from eight to 28 days and stay as a tadpole for 50 to 70 days. This is called their larval period. Herpetologists are scientists who study amphibians and reptiles, and they call these frog babies metamorphs. Metamorphs is the stage where they are turning or just have turned into a tad, from a tadpole to a frog. So these metamorphs will be tiny, real tiny. I suppose a term of endearment that we could call them would be froggy. It's kind of like when we call pups puppies and kittens kitties. One other thing that I want to mention about frogs in general today is that they don't just breathe air through their lungs. They can also respirate through their skin. See, the skin on their back has tiny blood capillaries very close to the surface of their skin. And this helps them breathe when they're underwater. They can stay underwater for a long time because the oxygen will just flow right into, through their skin, into their system. This is a problem though because their skin will readily absorb water pollutants. And is also something we forget usually is that when we pick up frogs, we have lotion or bug spray on them, and this can also be absorbed into their skin. Now, over the past 50 years, frogs in general have been on the decline, and this has been due to habitat loss, 
and a new disease called chytrid, which is frog specific. And that's why it's so important to preserve areas like Irwin Prairie. Well, that's it for Species of the Day. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.